So I think it's time to have a monologue on gun control. Uh, I'm only going to talk in the extremes, like England style. I, I, I don't really feel like getting into minutia of bills and assault weapon and all that political bullshit. But, um, yeah, we'll just keep it to the extremes. Um, why should there be total gun control, which I mean UK style, nobody has any guns, not even really the police. Um, so why does that make sense? Uh, I'm not saying I agree with that, I'm just outlining that argument. Um, look, yeah, I mean, in England they don't really have many gun murders. They're very, very low um, in like the dozens um, compared to the US, which is like 1,100, I think. Um, and, uh, what else? Also, um, yeah, I think you can make an argument that it, it makes crime less likely, that there is an argument, I'm not sure how valid it is, that it makes crime less likely. Um, because, look, here, here's an argument that a lot of pro-gun advocates like to import. They say, criminals don't care about laws. If guns are illegal, the criminals are going to be happy because they could get guns and everyone's going to be unarmed. Well, that's not necessarily true. The reason that's not true is, let, let's talk supply and demand here. When a good or service is made illegal or contraband, it adds a premium to it, okay? So criminals, people who are committing crime, don't necessarily have a lot of money. And I could give you a very good example of this in New York City, where handguns are more or less illegal. And here's the thing. I actually did tr was considering buying a handgun in New York once on the buy market. The thing is... It would be double the price. Double the price if you bought it legally. Double. So in a Glock 19, let's say, which is what I currently own legally, which here, a 19 third generation, which is $500, in New York City would probably go for like twelve or 1300 Now here's the, here's the argument I'm making. If you're a criminal, you might not necessarily have twelve or $1,300, because if you're going to break into someone's home and like do shit, you know, one, maybe it's not cost effective, to maybe just don't even have the capital to buy a gun, right? So, my purpose is to debunk the notion that there is no reduction in crime benefit to gun control, because the first order effect is certainly to make guns themselves more expensive, even to a criminal, you know, even to a criminal. However, England has the second highest crime rate in the EU, Yet it has the strictest gun control policy. What I mean is there's like stabbings and, and riots and robberies and it's not very safe. The, the police don't do a great job. And it, it's not a great place to live. But I pose a question to gun control people. Say you're living in, in, in London. Is it morally right to prevent someone from protecting themselves, from being able to protect themselves, you know, when they're living in a very unsafe neighborhood? Like, does that person not have the right to be able to protect themselves from robberies and, you know, rapists or whatever, you know? Because if you, if you enact gun control policies, essentially, you're making, and you don't even have to go to England, go to Detroit, for example. You go to Detroit or any shanty town in Ohio in the Midwest, and I've seen a lot of them. Does it make sense to, is it morally all right to take away those people's right to defend themselves. Let alone, forget any fears of, of mass shootings. Just for a second. Just, just don't, e just put that out of your mind for a second. It, it, it sucks. It shouldn't happen, but it does. And, and yeah, gun control very well might reduce this, but, but let's just put that away. The question I'm asking is, is it morally okay to put a person who's in a very dangerous situation and make them incredibly vulnerable? Is that morally justifiable? And I want to pose another question to you. What do you think of the Bill of Rights? Have you noticed that the Bill of Rights seem to be more and more disregarded as time goes on? Like the Patriot Act basically got rid of the Fourth Amendment, you know, searches without warrants. The NDAA, which you probably have heard of by now, got rid of the Fifth Amendment and you could also argue the First. Uh, for example, Anwar al uh was basically killed for speech crimes. He was an American citizen who was basically just hanging out with Al-Qaeda people and talking to them and inspiring them. And, you know, they killed him. 
he was killed without trial with a drone. And his little kid, too. He's like a 15-year-old kid. But, um, yeah. So, don't you see that there's some sort of... Second Amendment, of course, is one of the Bill of Rights. Don't you see that there's a general trend going on where our civil liberties and particularly the Bill of Rights are being chipped away? And do you, is that something that you support? And don't you think that getting rid, that attacking or curtailing, let's call it, the Second Amendment is continuing that trend? And perhaps that the Second Amendment was there to prevent government from impeding on our civil liberties, from impeding on our rights, from free, you know, if you have an armed society, don't you think a less government is less likely to take tyrannical steps like, uh, you know, arrest people indefinitely without trial, arrest pe people for, like, Orwellian thought crimes or speech crimes or whatever? I mean, Hitler, you know, Alex Jones like to talk about it, and it's true. You know, all the totalitarian states, they don't have armed societies. You know, Mao, Stalin, Hitler, they all took away the guns. You know, hit Cuomo. Cuomo, for example. Cuomo's speech about gun control parallels Hitler's. I listened to Cuomo speak. Hitler was like saying, we're going to be, in a, our gun control policies are going to be an example for the whole world to follow. Cuomo's like, New York's policy will be an example for the rest of the United States to follow. It was like so scary. I got to tell you. But, um, yeah. So, look. I'm, I know a lot of progressives are for gun control, but look, the argument that I'm making to you is that the argument I'm making is that if you're supposedly for civil liberties and care about civil liberties and care about free speech, you're not being intellectually consistent on on, gun, on if you're for gun control. All right, if you want to get rid of 32 round magazines, which I actually have by the way, um, legally. Or, you know, you want to get rid of burst fire assault rifles. Okay, we can have a discussion. But semi-automatic weapons? You basically want to reduce the population to, like, 19th century technology? Semi-automatic just means one pull, one shot. That's what semi-automatic means. And a semi-automatic weapon of any kind is not an assault rifle. Assault rifle is burst fire, multiple fire. So, look. I'm just saying, if you're for gun control, you're not being intellectually consistent. Um, and, I, and I personally think that the Second Amendment is there. Um, look, if you live in Israel, the state of Israel, for example, which I actually might want to move to, I can see how it makes sense that you want to have gun control, but this is America. We have it in the Bill of Rights. You know, the Bill of Rights are there. They shouldn't be fucked with. You don't fuck with the Bill of Rights. That's it.